Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to show you some techniques to go from Gravity Sketch to Photoshop quickly. First we'll press the blue menu button, go to Prefabs, and import a last. I'm going to import it at scale, so I'm going to click the actual last. You can change the dimension or the direction here, and then I'll press the blue check mark to import it into the space. Then I'll come down to layers, lock the layer with the last on it, and also name it. Keep in mind if you want to name a layer, you just click the name, type it in, and press the blue check mark. Then I'll create a layer for sketch. and make my sketch line black with the color menu. You could either use the ink or the stroke tool for sketching. I like to use the stroke tool because I like an even consistency on my line. And then I'll go to settings and turn on the mirror and also turn on vertical lock. If you haven't used vertical lock before, what it does is it takes the up axes for the environment and locks it. This will make it so you have a little less movement when you're sketching. For some people it's more comfortable. I find that I turn it on and off for different parts of the process. Usually when I'm sketching in the beginning, I'll start with it on and then turn it off a little bit later. Okay, once we have a sketch, we can grab all of the sketch lines together, press the purple button to group them, and then use Smart Move to duplicate out a couple of copies. If you haven't used Smart Move before, all you need to do is stack your controllers head to toe highlight the object and make sure that both of your controllers are parallel to the axes you want to move along. You'll know when to click the grab button when a line appears between your two controllers. And if we want to duplicate, we do that and then press the index finger whenever we want a duplication. Okay, now what we're going to do is sculpt with these sketch lines and produce a few variations of this design using a feature called soft select. For this, we need to place all the lines in edit mode. If you grab all the lines and press the blue menu button once, it'll only place one line into edit mode. But if you long hold the blue button, it'll place every line into edit mode. If we reach out with the grab sphere now and grab a chunk of edit points, you'll see they all move together as a block. This is where we want to turn on soft select. Put your right controller in an open space, press up on the joystick to make the grab sphere bigger, and then hold the grab button and press down on the joystick. The inner sphere is at 100% influence, and the outer sphere is at 0% influence, with a gradient between the two. So now the edit points surrounded by the inner sphere are going to be affected more than the ones closer to the outer sphere. This soft selection allows you to sculpt with your shoe sketch. This is a really powerful tool because we can duplicate out one sketch and make proportion adjustments, or even use this tool to sculpt our sketch to fit the last. Okay. I'm going to delete away these other two variations, and then we'll use soft select to sculpt the sketch around the last. So same as before, we want to place all the points into edit mode, and then look at our menu here and use the feature on the left hand side called bake mirror. Once you do this, it's going to break the relationship between both sides of the mirror, and then we can group together all the lines again, place them into edit mode all at once, and use soft select to sculpt our shoe so that it actually fits the last. You don't have to start your sketch with the mirror plane on so that it's symmetrical. If you decide to sketch without the mirror plane on, you can actually skip this step, but I find it's a quick way to get both sides of the shoe and then use this quick feature to shape the sketch accordingly. All right, now that we have our sketch, we're gonna use a trick called hidden line. So we'll create a new layer, label it filler, lock our sketch layer, and then select the volume tool. If you haven't used the volume tool before, it's similar to the ink in the stroke tool, except for between the spline, it connects a mesh. We're gonna use this to place some scrap geometry on the inside of our sketch lines. You don't have to be neat about this, you can use as many objects as you want. The only goal here is to keep the volumes that we create inside of the sketch so that they don't overlap our sketch.
Once we've done this, we're going to grab all of these volumes together, group them, and then grab the volumes again, press the color menu button, make it white, and then change the material to flat. Now what we can do is go to settings, workspace, and change the background to match the material. I have a gradient on right now. You can see that we have the sky, horizon, and floor tones set. If I turn off gradient, then we can change the environment to one solid color, and then change the shading to flat as well. As soon as you do this, we can close the menu, and now the volumes that we created match the environment. And this gives you a quick proportion model without doing any surfacing. Now, once you have it at this stage, you can actually add some more details and continue sketching over the model. It's actually quite helpful. And then from here, we'll take a couple of screenshots and move to Photoshop. So press the Save tab at the very top and select the Screenshot option. Before you take any screenshots, just make sure that this option in the bottom of your menu on the Save tab is flicked to the right. That means everything that you have is going to be saved to landing pad instead of being saved directly on the headset. This will just make it so it's easier for you to access all your screenshots in one place. Now what we can do is go around the model, adjust the field of view, and press the blue menu button every time we want to take a screenshot. You can also turn on transparent background, that's going to save your image as a PNG and this might make it easier for you to work with in Photoshop. After you're done, we can press the red X button. I turn on the option when taking screenshots for instant photo. This means that you can actually use your screenshot that you just took in the environment. And so here you can see kind of what we're gonna do in Photoshop. I'll just lay out a quick sketchboard and set it to the side here. All right, so if you have a headset that's plugged in, one other feature that you can use here is the orthographic viewport. If you click the selection, you can grab the different panes, pull them into the environment. And what's really useful here is this is an active window. So as we sketch things in the space, it will show you how it actually affects the model in those viewports. So I'll use a big red sketch line and you'll see that it auto updates in those windows. Also in the bottom right hand corner of each of these windows is a screenshot button. If you click the screenshot button, that will also save directly to your landing pad account and you can access that later for Photoshop. So another technique that you can do if you want a cleaner sketch is come to the stroke tool, turn on point mode, and then do a clean line sketch over top. So what I'll do now is turn down the visibility on my loose sketch so that I can use it as reference and then create a new layer for a clean line sketch. So now each time I click the index finger, I can drop in an edit point and this gives me a much more refined line. So I'll take some time here and trace the loose sketch just so you can see what it looks like if you do decide to make a clean sketch. The nice thing about this process is you have more time to think and you have that loose sketch as a guideline. So I often find that I'm actually changing the design around quite a bit if I do decide to do a clean sketch. You can also take these lines, place them into edit mode, and make further adjustments. All right, and so this is what a nice clean sketch looks like. Again, if you were moving to Photoshop, you don't necessarily have to do this, but it does help clear up what the design's going to be. 
Now what we can do is actually grab the entire model, shift it off the mirror plane, place all the pieces into edit mode at the same time, and then toggle on the mirror. And so very quickly, you can get the other shoe as well. Okay, with that, we should now grab our sketches from landing pad. So once you're at landing pad, you can come down to the screenshot filter and you'll see your screenshots there. You can rename them, download them, and then open up Photoshop and unzip the folder that we downloaded, drop the screenshots into Photoshop. And what I like to do is take the sketches, turn on multiply, and just make sure I have a white background. Now I'll go through, trim away some of the fat, and lay out a quick sketchboard. And now I can actually start sketching underneath the sketch layer, turned to multiply, and just do some color material visualization. That's pretty much it for this video. I wanna encourage you to try this technique out because it's a really great way of being lazy and just getting as many sketch views as possible from a quick model. Again, you always have this model, it's always editable, so you can go back into Gravity Sketch and reuse elements of it, or just use the soft selection tool to change up proportions and make a few more concepts. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one and have a great day.